This is an Ask Slim special presentation. Go to AskSlim.com to learn about our charts and analysis, educational trading videos, trader coaching, and hedge fund consulting. Big Picture Analysis, U.S. Stock Market. All right, well, it was last October 6th that I did a big picture on the stock market quite a while ago, and a lot has certainly happened. Actually, did update that for my year-end prediction uh, just by the number, but certainly haven't updated the charts. It's time to do that now as we've seen these big moves in the stock market. Um, when, if you go back and look at that October 6th um, video, at the time the market was bouncing and we were looking at that bounce, looking at the technical aspects of the bounce. And at the end of that video, I had summed it up and I said everything was pointing that this was a simple bounce that the market was in at the time and that the bull market was over and it was likely that we were going to have a significant correction. And I had showed that I thought it would come down into the late winter, early spring period. So a lot has uh, not changed since then because uh, the, the cycles I'm going to show you in these um, charts are pretty much still very in alignment with what we had talked about then. Of course, the charts have changed somewhat in that we've had a failure of that bounce. And we'll want to look at that. And uh, I actually want to look at a little longer picture also just to uh, look at some proof uh, that these cycles that we look at exist and have existed for a long period of time. So we're going to look at five charts here. We're going to start out looking at a very long-term chart uh, thank, uh, thanks to profit charts because it has longer uh, term charts, more data on there than the regular TOS charts. And uh, so we're going to look at the big cycles, uh, the monthly cycles, going back to 1949. That's the last 66, 67 years. Uh, then we're going to look at the Dow Jones um, monthly cycles as they exist now in this present bull market. We'll look at the weekly um, uh, moving averages on the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. And what I look at is the 2134 EMAs uh, when I look at the bigger picture. And we're going to look at the S&P 500 uh, and a couple other indexes maybe on the Hull moving average on the monthly. So that's the uh, uh, studies that we're going to use here. And these are the studies that I use for the longer term analysis. And I think that they're, it's really important to get a sense for the longer term analysis for those people that are, of course, investors. And you know, most of us have money in IRAs, um, even uh, 401ks, uh, that we can uh, change allocation. So it's pretty important to get a sense for the big picture and, you know, which markets are investable and or not, or which stocks are investable or not. So uh, this is, of course, a big picture analysis. So we're going to start out here looking at the uh, cyclical patterns <clears throat> as they've existed the last 67 years. Here is uh, a profit a chart, and we're going to start this out by looking at 1949. Now, the reason I'm looking at 1949 is that's really when the consistent cycle patterns really started. So 1949, this low right over here. Now, if, if I go back on the chart just quickly uh, for you to see a little bit earlier, you're going to see here the crash of 29 right there and then this long period of digestion. Now, a lot of people are comparing the period uh, following uh, th this bull market right in here or this bounce and then this right in here as to where we are right now economically. In other words, the depression comes back. It was really never solved. QE, well, they did QE right over here till 1936 and that ended and you could see what happened after QE ended. So that's some interesting stuff. So what I want to do is go back to where these cycles really started 
uh, and uh, you can you could peg 1949 as the bottom. But here was the bottom in 42 at the Dow, in the Dow. Here was the Dow bottom in 49 in the Dow. So this was a little over seven years, and a little bit longer than the normal cycles. You could probably pick two of them in here, but we're not gonna. We can't really prove the cycle rhythms until they start in 1949. So that's generally where I start these counts that had started. So let's take a look at these markets in here so you'll see. Now what I want to highlight is 53 months at the end of a bear market. So a cycle is measured from low to low. 49 is the low here and 53 is the low here. That's the year 1953. And uh, here's where I was born, right there, January 1950. And the uh, here is the cycle. You could see that right there, 53 months. This one in here, you could see the cycle. That's 51 months from this bottom to this bottom. And this one, you could see the cycle right in here as it was 59 months from this bottom to this bottom. This was the crash of 62. Pretty famous right there, the crash of 52. That was uh, after um, JFK was elected right in here. And uh, this was a uh, pretty severe 28% uh, decline in five months. Now, there's a, a lot, 28% is a pretty normal and regular decline. So uh, it rallied 54 months and, and declined for five months, 28%, not very unusual. So let's go back to uh, 1962 and we'll start to compare these bottoms again. And you're gonna see this one, which was 59 months, this one is 51 months, 47 months, 55 months. Pretty scary how these cycle patterns just absolutely keep coming in great regularity. Now, very, very typical. Now, I want you to see here what's typical at bull market tops. You get a top, you get a false rally and a big decline. Top, false rally, big decline. Top, false rally and big decline. So that is very typical and you know what we just had is a top and a false rally and a big decline. So that was, those were all 50 something months, right? So let's uh, continue this looking at this. And uh, here you will see that's 55 months to the low there. 42 months, a short one, and the shortest one until the mini bear that we just had. 53 months, so you can see the cycles right in here. Very, very nice. And then the massive rally that we had through 1987 right there. And that was a total from that low there in 82. That was the major uh, bear low, cyclical low and this one a 63 month low. So you could see that cycle as you had the crash in 87 right there and that 80, uh, 63 month low that you can see right there. 40% decline in three months. So crashes are pretty significant when they come and they do. So that uh, this was a mini bear here, 36 months right there. This was 49 months to the low in 1994, right? Actually, it was right over there. And uh, then uh, we get into the bull market that we just had that was the um, huge uh, one that ended in the dot bomb bust. So you had a rally right over here from uh, that 49 month low and then a rally, it declines to the 47 month. You can see that right there. And then you had the dot com bust right in here and the big break, 52 months to that low. So 47, 52. And then you get to the bull market that we're in right now. So what I wanna do now is, uh, you saw the consistency in here out of all of these 60 something years that we looked at. Um, there was one mini bear of 36 months from low to low, uh, and the rest of them pretty consistently 40 something to 50 something months. The 1987 was so extended that it brought a huge crash, and uh, that's typically what happens. The longer it stays up, the harder the decline. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. So that was a, a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average for the last 66 years, looking at the um, monthly charts. Now, now I, what I wanna do is now move over to our charts that we look at for people that subscribe to my TOS charts, 
if you go to the weekly Dow Jones Industrial Average, you're going to see all kinds of colors on there. That's the one chart that I have on the whole grid that if you expand it to monthly, everything on there is, all the drawings are for monthly charts. So what I'm going to look at right now, all, everybody who gets our charts can do the same thing. So this is the um, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, and we're going to go back to look at the same cycles that we just looked at. So a little overlap here. We talked about the dot-com bust right over here and this 56-month period right in here from this low in 98 to this low here in 02. So that's the 56-month period. Now this in here was the longest in modern world history, 72 months. It rallied for 52 months, you can see that, and then it declined for uh, all the way through, uh, for 24 months really, all the way down 20, I'm sorry, 20 months, all the way down through that 70 month low, 72 month low, right over there. So that is uh, a uh, the last two uh, complete cycles that we just looked at right in here and this one right in here. This is the new cycle that we're in. So just again, uh, this uh, is on your weekly chart, expanded to 20 year monthly, and uh, the cycle brackets you will see on the weekly chart are for monthly, and all of the cycles and colors you see on the weekly chart are for the monthly. So if you expand it to 20 year monthly, you're gonna see this chart. So what? Uh, w w now what I wanna do is I wanna look only at this cycle that we're in right now which is right here. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average Monthly, and this period right in here from this low in 09 to where we are right now. That is, this was a 75 month peak right over here, and uh, that is extraordinary. So sometimes we measure that peak from the mini bear right over here, which makes a lot more sense to me. And then it's only a 43 month peak. So it depends on where you really measure it. This will have been a 31 month cycle and well, the shortest in modern history. So it's you know reasonable to take it from there. And so I want to expand out the expand out right now further, so you can see the how these uh, cycles, how these uh, charts are made up in even smaller cycles. Now I do this every time, but I still have, we have so many new viewers all the time that I want to redo this. So this cycle right over here, 1998 to 19 to 2002, made up of three cycles. So what I'm going to do is go in here and just look at this section right in here and you will see here that we had this period right in here, the whole bull and bear market made up of three cycles. One, two, and three and those were 20 months, 18 months, and 18 months. So you can see three perfect cycles that made that up. So now we're going to go into this period here which is the bull market and bear market from 2002 to 2009. And you can see this period in here is the whole bull bear market. This is made up of 18 months, 20 months, 19 months, and 15 months. Four cycles, very, very consistent, very, very readable. So now what we want to do is we want to look at the market that we're in right now and break this down even further. And you can see in here that these cycles are 16 months, 15 months. This was a tough one to read at 20 months. That's where it lines up right here. And then a pretty clear one here at 16 months. Now we are in the fifth cycle off of this low or the third cycle off of the mini bear low. It depends on where you look at it. So now we're going to take a closer look and just at these last a couple of cycles. But before we do that, I want to make a note. This, you can see the 16 month cycle here. We are 14 months so far. You can see that number 14 right there. So that says that the decline we're in in this likely bear market is early and there is likely some you know one to four months left probably more likely two to three months left of this and that takes the projection into this February to April 2016 low which we've been looking at for quite a long period of time you can go back to the October 6th um, uh, video and you'll see well we were pretty much looking for the same thing so now let's just take a look in here even closer 
and you can see well we've had this red period in here and there's that 14 month that we're in right now and this correction right over here I had that marked off that the 15 percent correction was a normal correction so we had expected that and that it's a reasonable to expect the bear market down to the 20 percent or worse now you see this slim uh, the first uh, th this was from the first uh, quarter prediction that I did at the end of the year looking for the Dow to get down to 14690 that's about a 20 percent correction I'm going to show you that in another chart also it's reasonable to expect it to be beyond 20 percent and this is the major 38 percent off of the whole big bull market and that would be uh, a price uh, level on the Dow of about 13,380. Now my, my my low that I predicted at the end of the year was 14,690 and you know that's a 20 percent and a reasonable number. So you can see where we are now looking at this monthly in 14 months likely to go down further and uh, also uh, just note in here that um, the uh, uh, there was a crossover right over here uh, and uh, when you see that these moving averages you're looking at are set up for the weekly so I, I kind of don't want you to pay a lot of attention to that but because it's there somebody might be looking at it and I'm going to say don't look at that crossover I'm going to show you some other ones right now so that's a look at the monthly patterns going all the way back to 1949 and now looking at our charts on the monthly and uh, to me based on the cyclicality which is astounding um, uh, there is it's early for this to be the bottom uh, and especially if this is a bear market usually bear markets extend out uh, in their declining phases a little longer now the last one in the declining phase uh, in the last bear market which took you down to 2009 that whole declining period was 20 months long so if you measure from the peak that we had uh, last year uh, right now we're only about eight months long so it's not it's reasonable to expect more time on the downside in here and completing this cycle that we're in at about you know 16 17 18 months so it could go out uh, well into the springtime period when we look at that so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to two more charts because what I want to look at is uh, something that we looked at uh, similarly in uh, the last let me line this chart up for you to see uh, in the that last video October 6th and uh, to look at some of these technical indicators that are suggestive that the market is still in trouble. So uh, I'm going to look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average here. And uh, this, uh, what we're looking at now, is the DJI uh, on a weekly chart. And this chart, uh, I'm going to show you the same chart on the S&P 500 with uh, more information on it and comparing some other, other markets. But what I want you to see in here is uh, the 2134 uh, exponential moving average. So uh, the last crossover that we had was at the bottom of the mini bear right over here that we looked at. From the point of the mini bear uh, over here, the bullish crossover right here, it stayed positive all the way through this bull market. It's a great way to read the quality of a market. So if I look at this period that we're in right now, when I did that last, I looked at the S&P 500 on October 6th, and I said, this rally right in here, I was suspicious was not going to be real and was going to turn over again. Now, this, if I get a really, really close look right in here, you will see that you never got a crossover that kind of almost touched right over here and rolled over and turned over negative again. So that uh, really was a great indicator. Now, here are the um, downside, uh, whoops, moved in uh, a little too far in here, I want you to see. Uh, of some uh, Dow Jones targets that we're looking at. So this is that low that we had uh, in that big correction last uh, oct uh, into last um, August. And uh, this you can see well, the Dow Jones is getting close into that level. Between the major uh, uh, 23 and the intermediate 38 is a confluence of support right in there. That comes in in the Dow Jones under the uh, 15,530 number. So we're now at 15, 
at 16,000, so that's about another 500 points, 550 points below our present level. So the, my prediction right over there was the 20% number, it's uh, 14,690, right about there is what I was looking at. You can see some old lows over there. And the intermediate 50 is at 14,348, which is a reasonable expectation and you know, probably about a 26, 27% decline uh, in the Dow, which is a less than average bear market. So in other words, that would be optimistic, thinking it stops over there. So uh, that is a look at the Dow Jones. Now we're going to switch this over to the S&P 500 because I want to make some similar comparisons to what I did before. So here's the SPX, uh, and uh, we have the same uh, indicator on here. And what we're going to look at here is comparing these bull markets. Now this is the bull market that peaked in uh, 2000, the bull market that peaked in 07, and where we are right over here uh, in 2015-2016. Uh, so let's just look right over here at this bull market right here. You could see me grabbing that. That's uh, from 98 to uh, 2002. And this uh, period right over here is where the crossover came on that 2134. You got this fake rally. It never got close to crossing over again and then the market fell hard again. It might be this fake rally that you could compare it against. You can see I have that highlighted there in yellow. So uh, that uh, a pretty similar situation. Go to this peak in, uh, in uh, 2007 and you will see a similar occurrence. It actually uh, got the 2134 crossover right here. They turned up but couldn't cross over, got into resistance, and then the big decline right there. So let's look now at the present year that we are in and uh, get a little closer look in here also. And uh, you will see what happened in here is that um, we had the crossover negative right over here on the 2134. It tried to cross back over here, got just above the resistance levels, made us doubt what we were believing, and then turned over and clearly crossed uh, back to the downside uh, in a um, pretty um, strong way. So here's what we want to look at in here. Here is the uh, S&P 500 now trading at uh, about uh, 1890 as we do this you can see the big head and shoulders top in here the neckline right over there the measurement right over here of that head and shoulders is that red oval that you can see I put in there and the cyclical pattern in here that comes into March April you can see that kind of predicts that kind of level of around you know close to 1600 sometime in March or April that's in alignment with what we're looking at in those monthly patterns right you can see that right there so uh, you know uh, the we had this correction right here 12.5 uh, percent here's a 15 percent number right over here here is the uh, intermediate um, 38 and the 20 percent correction comes just under the 1700 level right there and the intermediate 50 right here at 16 right around 1600 the major 38.2 down around 1575 so 1575 to 1600 is a reasonable expectation for the bottom of this bear market could you know go for this 20 percent at 17 uh, that would be 17 uh, to 1725 might be some reasonable stopping point over there but who knows if it'll hold it uh, but you could see the big head and shoulders top that formed in here right over here left shoulder and the head and the right shoulder right just on the neckline or just below it you can see that we got below there and you know likely to dance around over here a little bit but you could see there's most likely that big decline coming right in there so you can see the 2134 dancing around here made us you know question what was going on but just like the other major bull markets turns down sharply again so wanted you to see that 2134 those comparisons that we make and that we're likely in this uh, a, a continuation 
of uh, this uh, uh, bear market and uh, maybe beyond this topping process and just uh, at a point where we could maybe stall a little bit. Uh, but the next chart is an important one to look at also and this is the hull moving average on the monthly uh, and we're going to look at the S&P 500 in here and this is uh, again you know about uh, really getting a focus on um, longer term holdings and what do you do with your money and you know we've been warning about the top we saw the hull moving average turn over right over there and you can see that it is still heading down look what happened over here where it turned down there's the major bear market look at it here where it turned down there's the major bear market now in these cases right here these were the corrections and the mini bear what happened was it turned down and then turned up again this market had the chance to do that, but it didn't. And therefore, the probabilities are very high that this is a major downward bear market and we're going to get those declines into late spring you know uh, late winter early spring just as we expected so uh, we could look at you know the the Russell which turned down you know uh, pretty similarly right here and you could see that moving down pretty strongly the Nasdaq NDX was kind of the last one uh, and still kind of a holdout as it moved sideways but now kind of rolled over again you can see that and that's been the strongest one for sure and the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, uh, just looking like the rest of them having rolled over and uh, turned down so summing it up uh, as we talked about on October 6th we thought a bear market was at hand uh, we got a, a little concerned on that late rally uh, and but then it failed and we can see all of our indicators are looking like it's rolled over and failed major cycles that we're looking at on the monthly with some months yet to go very likely that this uh, downside ends up to be more than 20 percent from its all-time high and uh, you know that would put us uh, from uh, let's say my projection for the first quarter uh, down around on the Dow about 14,690 could be down in the 13,000s 14,690 was the number down into the 13,000s before this is over with if this turns into a real panic and uh, got a feeling that's what's going to happen so, so far it's followed our patterns pretty much as we expected and uh, we're going to just keep our eye on them and probably you know in a couple months we'll do another big picture on the stock market when uh, or if something significantly changes but uh, you can see it's following it uh, following our pattern so far and uh, been uh, valuable really valuable I, for me I went almost all cash uh, on my longer term holdings because I expected this and uh, I hope a lot of you have benefited from it so uh, that's a look at the big picture of the stock market and I will see you in the next second well, I'm going to the and I'm going to a show.